Give us the message around your full year guidance because you've cut your full year profit estimates. What, what's behind that? I think really the message uh, or the way to look at this is that we, we certainly have had some headwinds in the, uh, in the business uh, on the back of rising fuel price and also operational disruptions in summer. But at the same time, going forward, we are seeing quite a developing tailwind uh, for the business coming from new aircraft deliveries. Uh, an improving yield environment and also is still affecting the next financial year which we didn't have this year. In terms of the capacity conversation in Europe, we've seen a number of airlines struggling. How many more carriers do you think are going to have to fail over this winter? It, it typically happens, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly. I think um, consolidation in the industry actually helps the structural players, the structural winners, and we consider ourselves uh, being one of them. Um, you know, we are ourselves playing the capacity discipline. Uh, we reduce capacity. We were planning on 18%. Now we are delivering 14% for the second half of the financial year. Um, I think that's just the way to deal with situations like what we are seeing at this point in time. And the weaker players are unable to, to compete and yes. un unable to survive. And as they are unable to survive, we're seeing some M&A opportunities. Are you tempted to get involved in that consolidation? I mean, we've seen things like Iceland Air and WOW being put together. There are, there are deals being done. Are you, are you in the space? No, we, we are interested in growing our operating platform uh, in the wake of consolidation as opposed to buying airlines, buying uh, businesses. Uh, but we would be interested in buying assets, uh, for example, and we are certainly interested in putting capacity uh, into, into the space where airlines fail. So growing it organically or Absolutely. buying assets, but not necessarily businesses. Yes. Um, you've said that you keep, want to keep your plan on Eastern Europe as that market is growing. Uh, Josef, what, what about Western Europe? Why not? As, as we're seeing uh, the collapse of some airlines throwing up opportunities, why not get more exposure to Western well, Europe? Well, First of all, Central East Europe is growing 4% on GDP ahead of the Western European levels. We are still seeing a lot of market stimulation opportunities in, in Central East Europe. Having said that, I think we are actually quite upbeat on some of the opportunities in Western Europe as well. We have Bizarre UK, a new UK airline. Uh, that uh, business is scaled up to, to 10 aircraft in a, in, in a few months. Uh, we have expanded our network in the, in the UK and we remain very upbeat about the opportunities here in the marketplace. It's an interesting timing to expand in the UK, certainly in this kind of business which no doubt is built up uh, around um, those from Central and Eastern Europe visiting friends and family back home and living in the UK and, and vice versa. Do you feel that this business is going to be limited, held back by Brexit? I think the business has gone much beyond um, that traffic flow. I mean, we are seeing a lot of... Um leisure travellers coming inbound into the UK or, or, or flying outbound to Central East Europe. And also, I think we are becoming more and more appealing to business travellers as well. So it's not just VFR, it's the, the leisure yes. side as well. Um, is, is one of the reasons you wanted, you're not so interested in growing in Western Europe, although I heard what you said about growth mm -hmm. elsewhere, I, I, would you just rather keep out of Michael O'Leary's way, keep out of the way of Ryanair? Well, not, not necessarily, uh, but I just think that Central East Europe represents a better opportunity uh, for our business. It's an underpenetrated market. It's catching up. It's converging uh, economically, giving us disproportionate um, growth opportunities.